Young people today have Google. Yes. When I was growing up, if you didn't know an artist, it was good. It was legitimate. I don't. I never heard of you. Today, yes. Google. <laughs> Everybody can know anybody. So I don't even know how to introduce myself, really. My name is KRS-One. It's an acronym for Knowledge Reigns Supreme over nearly everyone. But this is all online already. Who doesn't know? Whoop, whoop, that's the sound of the police. If you don't know all of that, then this interview is not even, you know. First of all, hip hop is not just a culture, it's a new civilization. Okay. Hip hop is one of the oldest cultures on earth. It is the first thing that human beings do when they come into existence. Yes. Breaking, MCing, graffiti art, DJing. Breaking is dance. The earliest form of human communication anywhere is dance how you move. Move according to nature, move according to the fish, the lions, the gazelles, the trees. This is what hominin humans did. Yes. This is early human, Neanderthals, uh, Rhodesia man, uh, Australopithecus, uh, early hominin human. The reason most sociologists don't regard hip hop as a culture is because they don't respect you. Okay. That's the issue, or me. They don't respect us as people. Any culture, you could say, the fans that went to see the Miami Heat play basketball, that's a culture. <laughs> um, politics in uh, Washington, D.C., I guess, where I'm from, that's a culture. Now, those will be called subcultures. Meaning you have blacks, whites, Asians, indigenous cultures all coming together to say uh, uh, be online. Everybody's online. So there's an online culture. There's an online subculture. Anytime groups of humans come together for one thing, they form culture. Now that's the textbook. I don't know the sociologists that can't see that. It's, they're ignorant. Not us. They are. That's a subculture. Hip hop is a civilization. Now let me go back. Breaking. First things that human beings do is dance. Next thing human beings do is utter. This is MCing. Not language. This is before language. This is before organized language. Before all that. Uh, no, uh, no. That is called MCing. Sociologists only know rap, which is the commercial version of MCing. Their knowledge is small, not ours. We are MCs, E-M-C-E-E-I-N, MCing, spelled just like that, E-M-C-E-E-I-N, MCing. And the reason we spell it like that, and DJing, and writing like that, is because we call these uh, expressions of ours elements. These are the elements. Breaking, I'm seeing graffiti or DJing. These are elements. So whenever you write elements, at least the chemical society of the world writes their elements as penicillin, mucin. Um, uh, it goes on and on with the way you spell the way you spell chemical elements. Now, most people look at breaking them, seeing the graffiti art and DJs as, oh, just some black kids dancing. That's their prejudice. If we just look at the facts, we call our expression elements. We spell them as elements, not slang language, MCing, E M C E E I N G. So, because we say MCing, we drop the G. Uh uh. We purposely leave the G off because the G doesn't exist. We're talking about elements. Mm -hmm. The elements are what we're talking about. Now let's come back. Breaking. First things human do, dance. Second things human do, utter. Beatboxing. <laughs> Music with your body. That's ancient, ancient, ancient. 
before go to the great Buddha mm -hmm. in Asia the the sign language the hand movements of the Buddha each have significance into the mind of the person watching if the Buddha does this it means one thing if the Buddha does that it means something else so when you see women dancing like this and they do it like the women in India in Asia and they dancing like this they're speaking sign language was the first language before human beings could speak we spoke in sign language we hit body the head we spoke like this utter and used our hands that's MC and beatboxing beatboxing is a form of MC graffiti art Today it's called graffiti art. But anywhere you go in the world, graffiti art is the world's oldest art. Again, hominin humans. In Toulouse, France, they found stenciled human hands, which they call graffiti, by the way. 32,000 years old. This is early. This is before modern man. This is before Homo sapiens. This is hip hop is before all of that. This is hominin humans doing graffiti. What is graffiti? My self expression in art on a wall. The earliest form of graffiti: berry juice in the mouth, blow it onto the cave wall so you see my hand. And check it out. They blew it. They didn't draw, they didn't pick up a, a pen and write this stuff, no! They put juice in their mouth and spit it onto the wall over their hands so they make an impression with their hands. This is known science. This is science all over the world. The earliest writing, the earliest human writing ever is graffiti. It's called graffiti by anthropologists, archaeologists, sociologists. Go from there to what is called rock art. Rock art is the oldest form of art. We call it black books and we write no stuff, but ancient, ancient humans wrote on rocks, trees. No human on earth writes like this naturally. This is social indoctrination to write like this. If you give a baby a pen or any writing material, a child, any writing material, they'll go right to the wall. Yes. No human, if you give them a, t a pencil, a young kid, you give them a pencil, they're going to go like this. Show me a table. Mm -mm. They're going to take the pen and out of their own natural self, they're going to go right to a wall and start writing a wall. And the first thing they're going to write is their name. This is known all over the world. This is, this doesn't, it doesn't matter what sociologists think. We have higher knowledge. They need to learn before opening their mouth. Now the last thing, DJ. Cutting, mixing, scratching. Woo. First of all, I just get excited talking about hip hop. DJing is not turntables and the technology. That's not DJing. Serato is not DJing. Technique turn, not DJing. Beatboxing, not DJing. Cutting, mixing, scratching, that's DJing. What the human does to technology is DJing. Technology can never tell the human how to DJ. Never. That's not, that's something else. If you're talking about hip hop DJing, D E E. J A Y I N. Yes. DJ. Cutting, mixing, scratching. Invented by Grandmaster Flash and progressed by Grand Wizard Theodore. Cutting, mixing, scratching. Now, look at these elements of early human, early hominid. Dance, utterance, self expression through art. Cutting, mixing, scratching, which, by the way, to an early hominin, when you, when you cut or mix something, like for instance, scratching will give you fire. Cutting is uh, like when you, when you get an animal or you, you hunt in animals or you are uh, looking through trees, you're cutting herbs and things like that. Early humans, the cutters, were called stonemasons. 
It starts with stone. Cut. 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 That activity is what we are doing today. It's what we're doing. We, when we hear that, that shiki, shiki, shiki. when early humans did that, shiki, 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 woo, fire came up. Or they carved, they ripped off a, a hide. Somebody's skin got pulled off because they're cutting it with a, with, a, with a thing. Mixing, the blending of things that don't suppose to blend. This is early human psychology, early. To take this and make it match with this. How do you do that? It's called high intelligence. Now, the education that we receive today is all about the destruction of the ancient hominid. This is why we can't find, uh, this is why hip hop's true history has not been written down yet or even properly researched. Because hip hop's history is not the history of rap music. That's why they think it's not a culture. Because they say, oh, rap is a, a, a music genre. It's not a culture. Rap is not a culture. Rap is a subculture like reggae, jazz, gospel. That's rap. But what rap comes from, what causes you to rap, is called hip hop. And that is a behavior. That's not music. That's an ancient way to be. That this society, this, this colonial society that invades nations and occupies other people's territories, they can never let you know this truth about yourself. Never. And this goes worldwide. This is worldwide. It's not just black, Native American. Mm -mm. All people on the planet are hip-hop. All humans are hip-hop. All of them, every last one. Some know it mm -hmm. and some don't know it. That's the only difference. But, so let me come back to culture. Now, let's talk legally, okay? We talked about anthropology, archeology, span okay? That can't be, I don't know who thinks hip hop is not a culture and we're the first culture on earth. We're human culture. What everybody's trying to get away from. Put that to the side. Come down to legal. What's a culture? A culture is any time a group of people just declare themselves a culture. Now, forget, let's say all the anthropology, man, eh, throw it out the window. Throw the science out the window. If I'm in power, I say I'm a culture. And you got to agree with it. How can you tell me I'm not who I say I am? If I tell you I'm Japanese, how are you going to tell me I'm not? I'm telling you I'm Japanese. You say, no, more, wait, Chris, you're black. You got hair, your nose, your lips, and your skin. You're black, Chris. I say, no, I'm Japanese. Now, either you respect me enough to say, then let me treat you like a Japanese person. Because you say you're Japanese. How can someone outside of you tell you who you are? That's so racist, classist, ignorant. And this is how this is what hip hop is being confronted with. I'm telling you I'm hip hop. All you're supposed to do is go, uh-huh. <laughs> That's it. What opinion do you have if I say I am hip hop? You gonna tell me I'm not? That's like a, a, a Greek, a, a Greek man, a woman said, "I'm Greek." They say, "No, you're not." <laughs> like, Wait a minute, what are you, I'm Greek. No, you're not. Someone says, "I'm a, I'm an electrician. I, I'm an engineer. I'm a doctor. I'm a chef." Someone says, "No, you're not." What right do they have? To tell you you're not, the only way somebody can say you're not what you are is if you're not being it. Like if I say, I'm Japanese, but everything I do is African, then you got all the right to say, you ain't Japanese, get the hell out of here. But if I'm coming to you with dome arigato and <laughs> wearing the, I'm speaking the language, I'm wearing the clothes, I'm eating the food, I know the history, my wife, my kids, or my husband, my whatever, we living out Japanese life, we living it out right now. 
No one on earth could tell me I'm not Japanese. Especially if I go now, join the Japanese army, fighting Japanese wars. Other Japanese people will accept me and say, no, he's not black, he's our brother, he's Japanese with us. No outside person could ever tell you who you are, ever. Now, that's just legal. I am hip hop. Now, you have to prove that I'm not. Not me. I know who I am. I'm hip hop. You have to say, oh, you don't agree? You don't, who cares if you agree or not? I know who I am. Now, let's go further into legal. May 16th, 2001, we took hip hop to the United Nations and we declared hip hop an international culture with UNESCO. The sociologists need to do more work, do more research, get some more. This is historical fact. We spoke, we was at Kofi Annan was the, Kofi Annan's office was the overseeing office of our event. Our event is well documented. You can look it up, everybody knows it. We went to the UN, the UN accepted us. Forget these sociologists that don't know nothing. The UN, U, the, 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 what is called UNESCO, United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural, Cultural Organization, UNESCO, said hip hop is a world culture. They said it. We went to the United Nations to accept the world culture status. I was there, of course. I was a keynote speaker. We spoke of hip hop being the culture. We signed something called a Hip Hop Declaration of Peace, which the United Nations has as well. 300 delegates were there at our ceremony. It wasn't just me and a couple of my boys. Everybody showed up and documented it. Now, if these sociologists today don't have enough education, that's their problem. But hip hop is a global culture. You know what? There's two. There's two answers in there. Yeah. Um, the quick answer: what 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 built this movement? What what uh, what what made this all come together? Is a guy named Africa Bambada. Mm -hmm. He is the sole author of hip hop's cultural existence. I'm called an architect of hip hop culture because I popularize it. But Africa Bambada is the first one to tell all of us, let's come together under this banner called hip hop. And we gonna call ourselves Zulu Nation. But really, it's hip hop, it's this new thing that we're gonna uh, uh, cause in the world. It was deliberate, hip hop was never a mistake. We, we stumbled on some things, some things we tripped on and, and found out. But your question, was deliberate. Africa Bambaataa in 1981 uh, put out a record with, uh, well actually put out a record called Planet Rock, I think it was 82, uh, put out a record called Planet Rock. Um, he also uh, did a record with James Brown, the legendary James Brown. And uh, that record was peace, unity, love, and having fun. Those principles, peace, unity, love, and having fun, became the principles for this new culture called hip hop. Africa Bambaataa would meet with us regularly. This was no haphazard thing, we just rapping on the corner. That's MTV's history. Real hip hop history is Africa Bambaataa sitting everybody down and saying, listen, all this black, white, red, yellow is stupid. We're all human beings. Let's come together on that. Africa Bambaataa would teach Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity all at the same time. Imagine that. All at the same time. He get a little bit from Islam, a little bit from Christian, a little bit from Buddhism, and, go, and a little Rasta, a little metaphysics, a little yoga. Bam, Africa, he was teaching us all of this. So people like me, I went to, what well, was one of the many meetings, but I went, one of the meetings I went to was in 1987 in a place called Latin Quarters, it was a nightclub. Africa Bambaataa called another meeting, and he said, 
hip hoppers need to unionize. He said rappers, really, because rap was getting big in 87, like way before all of it now, but we were still small in 87. But Africa Bambada said we should form unions and try to preserve the original concept of hip hop, which was all about peace, love, unity, and having fun. I took that and started the Stop the Violence movement off that. From the Stop the Violence movement, you notice there's a song we did called Self-Destruction. When Self-Destruction was created, that was hip hop's first unified front. That was when we all unified and said, this is what hip hop is. Yes. The mainstream didn't like it. They said we were controversial. Imagine, I'm saying stop the violence and mainstream radio and television is saying that's too controversial. Too controversial to stop violence? Yeah, because if you're black and you're from the ghetto, you're not supposed to think like that. You're not supposed to have those thoughts. You're supposed to stay in your place and keep this, just stay in your place. We know everything. We control everything. Get that out of here. That's our parents. Rest their souls. But our parents were on their hands and knees begging to be part of America. We were never part of that, ever. And this is not just, again, blacks and Latinos get it the worst. Okay, we get it the worst in America. But the white people in America too started looking. And just a sense of justice was just like, wait a minute, why is it like this if it should be like this? And this is when hip hop exploded with Public Enemy, who was representing Minister Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam. And their whole audience was white kids going, don't say you understand until you hear the man. 911 is a joke. <laughs> this is all white kids. I mean, Public Enemy has a huge black following as well. But when you go to their concerts, dude, it was all revolutionary white kids, Russians, Croatians, Czech, England, France, Germany, Switzerland, Switzerland. Oh my God, this place here, from the day Public Enemy came out, the Swiss people have been down with that. More than with this commercial nonsense that they was getting. It's the Swiss, actually, Swiss hip hop, actually, that was the first to invite Africa Bambada out of America to hear. He was a Swiss. Really? Yes! You gotta interview Bam. Okay, okay. Get with Bam. It's Germany, France, Switzerland. And we don't even know who's first, really. Because the Swiss is some places that are, oh, give me an example. London wasn't really with hip hop in the early days. London wasn't, was like England, UK wasn't really with it. Now, of course, the UK is huge in hip hop. I mean, I can't say nothing about the UK. But I'm talking about the early days when, when it was dangerous to be part of hip hop, when you had to make a decision whether you were going to bring a hip hop out or not. The UK was against us, and, and not, not the people. The, the country was against us. I'll give you an example of this. As you drive into Switzerland, all you see is graffiti art. Okay? All you see is graffiti art. Now the government here is not, put, they're not taking the graffiti down. Sure, I guess if you write on some stuff, <laughs> the government is trying to clean up. But you can tell that the government here is lenient toward hip hop, toward its elements, breaking in the street, graffiti on the wall, people rapping. I can't make money in America. Why, why am I here? <laughs> okay, it's 2013, okay? Why is KRS in Switzerland and not in uh, Ohio? Because Ohio, the, not the people, the power, the, the, the the political leadership of Ohio don't respect me. But the political leadership of the Swiss, I'm not saying the Swiss politics any better, but the, but the government here is lenient. It's just more lenient toward hip hop's elements than hip hop's own home is. And this is the way it's been from the beginning when hip hop first started. We used to get, we had to leave America and come to Europe to, to get any kind of 
respect. And it's after Europe was respecting us. We go and do huge tours in Europe. Then America says, oh, oh, you mean something. Oh, because we're international now. So now you can't just keep us in a box in America and say, oh, that's just some dumb niggas over there. Just nah. <laughs> no, you can't say that. The Swiss are here now. The French are here now. The English, the Germans. Aust I was about to say Australians. I just came from Australia. Hold on one second. How's that? The Swiss in particular, all Europeans really, but I'm in Switzerland, let me talk about the Swiss. We've been coming here from the day we began in hip hop, from the day we started. We were coming to Switzerland and other places, Germany and other places. And the reason we come here is because we can't get respect in the United States. And what's the respect? The crowd, first of all, embraces our culture in Europe. And other places, but I'm just talking about Europe. Germany, Switzerland, Paris, uh, uh, France, Belgium. We come here, we feel like we're loved. We feel like, wow, look, there's graffiti here. Look, there's guys breaking on the corner. Look, there's a DJ right here. Now, that's not to say that America doesn't respect hip hop. The people, of course, respect it. But my country, the country I come from, won't even recognize Cool Herc, Africa Bambata, and Grandmaster Flash as being geniuses of their time. Hip hop has saved so many people all over the world. People that felt they had no purpose, people that felt they had no voice. You look at all the protests going on today, that's hip hop out there. Not just hip hop, but hip hop's definitely out there. Now you would think that our government would say, you know what? We're going to give a Presidential Freedom Award to Grandmaster Flash for inventing something in America that the whole world uses and enjoys. We're going to recognize you, Grandmaster Flash. Grandmaster Flash can't even work in America. He can't even feed his kids in America. Him, Africa Bambada, and, and Cool Herc has to leave the United States to come to Europe to get some sort of decent pay for their DJing, to get some kind of love, to get some kind of sponsorship. This is an injustice. And this is, this is the point I say to you, be proud of yourselves here today. Be proud of yourselves here today. Because we hip hoppers, we come here to your town, not just because we some, oh, we large, we coming into Switzerland, mm -mm, nope. You ask anybody, this, any serious recording artist, we come here humbly. We come here humbly because we don't get the respect in our own country that we get here. We don't get the money in our own country that we can get here. So we come here humbly. And any American artist that come here talking this duh, 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 mm -mm, they're not even, they're so far from reality it's not even funny and you should not even support them. Any act that comes here and don't understand the people, don't speak for the people, you don't understand hip hop. And, and so, I forgot your question. <laughs> <laughs> the question was about the social context. No, okay, let's go back. And social. <laughs> so, so, in the States, in the United States in the 60s, we had a, and 50s, 50s and 60s, early 70s, we had a thing called the Civil Rights Movement. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, uh, uh, Mega Evers, um, Stokely Carmichael, now Kwame Ture, um, and others. Uh, Black Panther Party, Weathermen, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this movement for freedom always existed within the United States. In the United States, we have a huge abolitionist movement, people who are against slavery. And most of them are white people, to be honest with you, uh, in the United States. Most of the people who are against slavery in the United States are white people. You would think, <laughs> you would think that black people would be the ones at the forefront of the abolitionist movement, and, and we are. I mean, I could quote Frederick Douglass, I can go to Nat Turner, I could talk about uh, Harriet Tubman and, and others. But when you look at the historical change, we, we can fight. We fight, we riot, we protest. But when it comes to the courts, the laws, 
the mood of society, religion. White people, white Americans have been at the forefront, have been the leaders of black freedom. Now, black people don't want to say that. I don't know why, but it's the truth. The truth is, Barack Obama was not elected by black people. Even if all the black people in America voted for Barack Obama, he still wouldn't win because we're that small of a group in the United States. Latinos, whites, they said, we want him, black man in office. Now, of course, we black people in America, we, we appreciate it. We're like, yes, finally we have a black president, blah, 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 blah. And I can go into that too on another level. But just the sheer excitement of it, okay? Just keep it light, keep it on the surface. To understand the movement for real, the real freedom movement, it has no color on it. And if it did have a color on it, it would be revolutionary white people that would be at the front of it. Now, of course there's people like me in the United States, black men that are fighting for freedom every day. Every day, we never let up, ever. It is in my blood, I will always stand for the cause of black liberation, no doubt. But I stand for truth, also. I stand for humanity first. The deepest part to being black is being African. The deepest part to being African is being human. The deepest part to being human is being God. The deepest part of being God is being love, being intelligence, and all of the above. Understanding, mercy, uh, all that. It's godlike. What would you rather be? Black or God? <laughs> Who are you really? African American or human? I tend to lean toward human myself. And so hip hop as a movement is colored with this as well. Not all of hip hop agrees with KRS One, and they should. Hip hop should be challenging everything that anybody is saying out there about. Truth will hold up, and that's all I speak is truth. So I invite all questions. But let's get it clear that all of hip hop doesn't agree with this. But like I just explained to the lady here, I'm one of the leaders of the culture. I'm not, and I don't say that like I'm above anybody. That's a job, that's a, that's a burden, that's a responsibility. That's not something you say and then all of a sudden somebody puts flowers on you. No, that's a hard position to be. To say, wait a minute, I'm trying to birth and lead my culture. So go back now to the 70s. Malcolm X is assassinated, Dr. King is assassinated, John F. Kennedy's assassinated, Mega Ev is assassinated, and, and Black Panther Party members is assassinated. And then all the other little ones that didn't get the name recognition, assassinated. I grew up in that. Hip hop grew up in that. There's two types of people in the world. Black men and black boys. Black boys is who you see on mainstream television. I want the girl, uh, the big house, uh, I'm driving the car. That's little boy stuff. And any man will let you know, any man knows that. Any adult knows that. Now I'm not saying that when you're on TV you can't aspire for the good things in life, no doubt. But a man, a real man, he gets on the TV and first, he looks for his kids. <laughs> Let me make sure my kids ain't today. Are they clean today? Did they learn something today? Uh, are they protected today? Before I can even talk to you, is my kids good? It's a man. Is my woman good? Is she, feel, is she empowered? Does she feel like she can breathe? Is she expressing herself? Does she feel loved? What's my woman doing? Most of the rappers you see on TV, they have no woman in their life. 
they have little girls who are only interested in little boys. So they play little girl, little boy games. Mm -hmm. I want the guy with the car. <laughs> That's a little girl, a little boy. I can't argue with that. Leave all that over there, okay? There's a little girl, little boy arena that rappers play into. But the majority of us are men and women. The majority of us. So the movement starts with black men. Hip-hop begins with black men in particular. In particular, not black boys. Not white boys, not Asian boys. Men, black men, talking to white men who are talking to Asian men who are talking to Latino men. We all come together and we say, like my man, um, oh man, I can run that like in graffiti, you got Takey 183, one of the most famous graffiti writers in hip hop. He's Greek. You got Quick and and Scene, who I think is Italian, Scene, and rest, rest in peace, he passed. But Scene is one of the, one of the, he's, a, he's a legend in graffiti writing. It's a white kid. Cap, big cap, who's running around crossing everybody out. White kid. They not hip hop? Of course they hip hop. But also, they recognize that this ain't about color, this ain't about race. Even white kids that live, in, in the neighborhoods in the Bronx, they know they, they, they're just as oppressed as we are. And they feel it every day. These are men, okay? Men, white men, who are getting hit over the head by the cop, called nigger lover. Oh, you just want to be a nigger lover by other white men. You're walking down the street with your black girlfriend, and you got blacks and whites dissing you because whatever. No, that's a man. Standing for his principles. Give a fuck what y'all think about me and my wife. I'm a man. Step over here, I'll give you two in your head. That's what I'm talking about. Now, that's where hip hop comes from. That. And that's what we're missing. Because now everyone regards hip hop as mainstream and MTV. And that's little boy stuff. Even the executives that work at MTV are little boys and little girls, all of them. Because there's no way a man is going to program what's being put on MTV. No way. You cannot say you are a man and then program MTV to be <laughs> what that bullshit is. You don't think that uh, that is selfish man? No. No? The selfish reduces you to a boy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the minute selfish, boy. Uh, angry, boy. Uh, racist, boy. Sexist, boy. All that, just anything you put in front, take you down the board. <laughs> Now, you may start out as a man, but the minute you open your mouth, we're going to see if you really a man or not. We're going to see. And what's happening is rap music through mainstream media is turning all boys into boys. They're not raising them as men. They're not raising us up as men. And this is the movement of hip hop. Maturity. This is it. This the, at least the first part of it was maturity. I'm not that kind of man. I'm this kind of man. And now we're going to stand on it. What is it? It's Malcolm X. Oh, word. What is it? It's the Black Panther Party. Oh, word. You go to any prison in the United States right now. Go to any prison in the United States. If they know, if the, if, if the prisoners that are there, if the people, the inmates that are there, if they know that you stood for revolution, you have no problems in prison. If they saw you on the TV, and they in prison, and they saw you on the TV go, gangster, gangster, I got the guns out, we on the corner selling crap. The minute you get in prison, you're finished. <laughs> you're done. You're done. Oh, you a gangster? Come on in here now. Come on in here with some real gangsters. And let's show you what gangster is. Because those, the people, most of the inmates in prison started out as boys, went to prison, and became men. Then they're in prison, they realized, damn, I shouldn't have killed that person. I shouldn't have robbed that person. But now you're in prison. So now you realize yourself, but you're in prison. 
So now you get aggravated with other people who are talking about robbing and shooting and killing and selling drugs. You're like, yo, they, all you're going to do is wind up right here. So if you dumb enough to be out there talking like that, the minute you come in here, dude, we waiting for you. I'm, I'm waiting for you. But now you let somebody like Chuck D or, or Immortal Technique or Dead Press or let any of them go to jail for any reason. They'll have dudes washing their underwear out for them and be like, yo, dog, yo, what you stand for, we protecting you on that right now. You let Cypress Hill be real. Let him go to prison and see the Mexicans come around him like a general. Ain't nobody touching be real right here. I <laughs> say today language. But this is manhood. Manhood! Yes. Right after manhood. Here comes womanhood. And it's not right after, it's really first, and I'm gonna show you why. Hip hop politically begins with men. It begins with black men. It really does. It, it begins with black with the attitude of black men. The Latino man was with that too, and then the white man was with that too. But Cool Herc, the father of our culture. The reason he went outside to play his music at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue, actually inside the, in the community center, the reason he went was because of his sister. His sister, Cindy. Cindy Campbell. Cindy, his older sister, was the one who said, yo, her, go, and as she said, um, he's, a, right, he's a graffiti writer, right? Cool ass Clyde. And it was his big assistant that said, could you DJ for my, my birthday party? And he left the, the walls and became a DJ and started playing, uh, you know, James Brown and uh, Apache and uh, all these classic records now. But let me go from him to her. Women, women, not little girls, women, real women is the purpose of hip-hop, is the glue of hip-hop, it's the glue of it. Men are the outward appearance of hip-hop, black men. Behind them is all kinds of women. Start with Cindy with Cool Her and Pebbly Poo, first female MC, who was with Cool Her. Take it all the way over to Sha Rock, who was with Funky 4 Plus One More. Take it over to Roxanne Shantae, who had many battles and won, by the way. Take it over to Salt and Pepper. Take it, who was battling Dougie Fresh when they first came out. Take it over to Queen Latifah, MC Light. These are hip hop women, okay? Take it over to them. Now, women are also the executives. Sylvia Robinson, legendary woman, her soul rest in peace. She was the founder and president, CEO, of Sugar Hill Records. The first rap records to come out in a major way, putting aside the fat back bands King Tim III, which is true scholarship. But coming over to Sugar Hill Records, that was ran by a black woman. Grandmaster Flash, Treacherous Three, Furious Five, Sequence, all of a black woman. See the vision and put it out. I say all of this to say, what causes the movement of hip hop? First, Africa Bambada caused it. But go further back, Malcolm X caused it. Go further forward, Cool Herc caused it. No, he didn't. Cindy caused it. Uh, go even further. My mother caused it. And every single mother that raised a single boy to a man. This is also hip hop. Ask most hip hoppers, the early hip hoppers from 81 to 91, the golden age of hip hop. 90% of us raised by women. 90% raised by single women. Dad was not around. Hip hop is feminine in a lot of ways. Hip-hop exalts the woman in a lot of ways. 
mainstream says, oh, hip hop is misogynist toward women. Hip hop degrades women. Stupid. What an idiotic argument. Those people who say that are not even part of hip hop. Because if you was part of hip hop, you know that it was Queen Latifah who put out, I need a gangsta bitch. A gangsta bitch, I need a gangsta bitch. Her artist was called Apache. He actually put the record out. But Latifah was the woman, the executive behind the record. Then Latifah puts out, who you calling a bitch? You and I, T Y, your biggest record in hip hop. This is one woman. Anybody who looks at hip hop would look at Mary J. Blige and Method Man. Method Man, the record, all I, you're all I need to get by. Shorty, I'm there for you anytime you need. For real, it's me and your world. Nothing makes the man feel better. Oh, I can't get his, record, his, his lyrics together. But when you listen to the lyrics of Method Man, and how he adores Mary J. Blige. He's just like, right, he's just like, oh, you're my world, you're my everything, you're everything. How is that misogynist? At the end of the record, he says to Mary, you my nigga. Does Mary go, why are you calling me a nigga? No, Mary know exactly what he's talking about. She's like, word, they did the video together. She even went and did another record with Ghostface, which was even bigger than that one. This is real hip hop, real hip hop. Not sociologists, not professors. They don't even know their own subject. How you gonna look at hip hop? They don't even know their own subject. They don't even know what sociology is. So to put a, so to put a, put a period on it real quick, there's a little period here. The movement of hip hop, peace, love, unity, having fun. It comes out of the civil rights movement, the continuation of that struggle to get free. And what is free? Not just free to run around and do stupid stuff, but free to be a man, free to be a woman, free to raise a family. Right now, hip hop is in family mode right now. All of hip hop is in family mode right now. All of us, we got our kids with us. We're putting our kids on TV. Will Smith just put his son up. Snoop just spoke the blunt with his son. <laughs> actually, he, um, he, <laughs> he actually, no, what I want to say is that his daughter, he just did a record with his daughter called No Guns Allowed. Um, just did a reggae record, Snoop Lion, did a record with uh, his daughter and Drake. Big up to Drake, big up to Snoop and his daughter. Uh, for doing that record, No Guns Allowed, and they, they did a reggae record on that. That's Snoop. That's 187 on an undercover cop, yeah, and you don't. That's him, okay? That's him, all right? Now he's my daughter, and no guns in school. Why? Because I'm a father, really. And we knew that. When Snoop said 187, on, we knew who he was then. Me and Snoop have been friends for years. Years. Does he look at me and say, oh, Chris is just preaching too much? Do I look at him and, oh, he's gangster gang? No! Snoop is probably more intelligent than I am. Think about this. Everybody who's everybody who is for the cause mm -hmm. doesn't run around with dreadlocks and red, black, and green on. Can you be corporate? and still be hip-hop. Does corporate involvement in hip-hop destroy hip-hop? Here's the answer. Africa Bambada taught us this also at the 1994 meeting of the minds at the Schomburg Center in Harlem. This very question was brought up. And the answer was, of course you could be corporate. In fact, more cultural people should go into corporate life. The problem with the corporate world is there not enough cultured people in it. People who are into their culture don't lie, cheat, and steal. Now that's not saying that all of the corporate world is about lying, cheating, and stealing. No, it's not. But when you're in a corporate situation, you have to tolerate lying, cheating, and stealing because the corporate is about capitalism. And capitalism is against democracy, against truth, against labor, against people. It's just by its nature, all are going to own. I mean, one is going to own, not all owning. One guy is going to own in the end. 
So if you're going to be in a corporate situation, if you're going to be in a corporate situation, what Professor Z, who uh, teaches at Lincoln University, hip hop scholar, the first actually, he said, when having intercourse with corporate America, use your culture as a condom. <laughs> this is the best way to explain this exchange between corporate and culture. Yeah. Use your culture as a condom as you enter corporate life. Keep your principles on you. Wear your principles. And the minute something comes up against your principles, that's when you start seeking your way out. You don't have to quit immediately like some cultural people do, like me. Uh, I, I'm guilty of that. I worked at Warner Brothers for two years. I was at the pinnacle of corporate life. I was the head of A&R, Warner Brothers. It was a great time for me. But the lying, the backstabbing, the deception, me as a man could not sit next to that, so I quit. But in hindsight, as I look back on it, I say, you know what? I should have just stayed and fought. I really should have stayed. Now me, I don't regret anything. I like my life the way it is. I'm glad I, I left. But as advice to other people, don't be so quick to quit. Because culture needs corporate. And corporate needs culture. In fact, Culture thrives. When, when a culture is thriving, it, it manifests corporate. It, it, it makes it, whether it likes it or not. It, it just, it's throwing off jewels. It's, it's, it's throwing off resources and, and things that everybody wants. A, a vibrant culture, corporations are going to come to it and it's going to create new jobs and, and new entrepreneurships, a vibrant culture. So corporate is not against culture. Culture is not against corporate. What we don't have is, is integrity in corporate life, dignity in corporate life, loyalty in corporate life. If we can maintain those things, then you'll do fine in corporate life. You'll, you'll do excellent in corporate life. But you'll get to a point one day which you're just gonna have to tell the lie. And that's when you're gonna have to decide, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm not doing that. And that's when you gotta go. And when you leave, your culture will embrace you because your culture will know, here's why she left. She left because they wanted her to lie about the culture and she refused. So she's gonna come in the culture. And you know what? The culture will take care of you. The culture will take care I'm living proof of that. I'm living proof of that. My middle finger, stay up, stay up to corporate life, MTV, all of that middle finger. Get it? Okay, stay up. But that's because my culture holds me. It, it holds me. This has nothing to do with being rich, because I'm not. It has nothing to do with being, you know, famous and rich and all of that, that's corporate. It's, it's fun, it's fun to spend money, it's fun to be popular, but children who go to bed at night with nothing in their stomach, and women who can't find a decent man to raise their kid, and men hey, who have... <laughs> that is never going to leave the earth. That right there. See? I don't speak the language, but I know exactly what she's saying. <laughs> I can feel that. <laughs> that right there, that's hip hop. And that's the culture. And as long as we stay true to the culture, you're gonna eat, you're gonna have respect, you're gonna be protected, you're gonna raise your family. Now, on the level of corporate, hip-hop is facing a new challenge today. The challenge is that the university system all over the world, colleges all over the world, are claiming that they can teach hip-hop without any credentials whatsoever to do so. Major universities, major universities are 
telling professors, they're telling professors, hold on, I, I go on after her? Yes, okay. Um, they're telling professors, you can teach hip hop because you have a sociology degree. You can teach hip hop because you have a journalist degree. You have a degree in musicology. You have a degree in psychology. This is so ridiculous. This is like, because I have a degree in engineering, I could teach law. <laughs> because I have a degree in medicine, I could teach culinary arts. I could teach you how to cook because I'm a doctor. That's how ridiculous this is. So you got these professors all over the world claiming themselves to be hip hop professors or hip hop scholars. Never did a show, never made a record, never even supported the making of one. <laughs> okay, never even, okay, you don't rap, but you, you produced an album. Okay, you paid for one, you, you made a beat, nothing, zero. They listen to rap music and then go, okay, now I can teach hip hop in a college. This is horrible for hip hop. I urge all hip hoppers to rise up on this. Anybody teaching you hip hop, if they don't have a degree from me, they're not hip hop. And I'm not saying that egotistically. I'm the first master teacher of hip hop. The first time hip hop ever had a teacher, it was KRS One. When nobody was even thinking about teaching hip hop, I was teaching hip hop and teaching through hip hop. Not just rap, graffiti art, breaking, MC, all of the elk fashion, everything we were teaching. Now, they don't want me in the university because I'm gonna expose the lies. So they get the people that they can control to say these are hip hop scholars. Then what they're teaching about hip hop, Tupac's lyrics? Biggie's life, uh, Criminal Minded is an album. We're going to listen to the Criminal Minded album and listen to what did KRS mean when he, this is not teaching hip hop. What's teaching hip hop is hip means to know. Hop is a form of movement. This is teaching hip hop. What is hip? What is hop? And how do we use that? How do we handle that? How do we live this? But we're going through something in hip hop right now that all true hip hopists should be questioning these professors. You see the way people are protesting in the streets all over? I think their energy is misplaced. Your government can't even help you with what <laughs> with what the protest. Like Brazil, big up to the people in Brazil that are doing their thing. But they're arguing with the wrong people. The government has no power. They, they can't even change. <laughs> The government's wondering what the hell to do right now, okay? Oh, they throw another tear gas. That's all the government could do. The people have to unite. That's what these protests should be showing us. Okay, we, we blew off some steam, we threw, we fought the cops, but who's gonna start organizing thought? And where you organize thought is not on the street, it's at the universities. Take those protests and go into the universities and say education should be free across the board. You should never have to pay for education again. That's the beginning of every revolution. We would get more money. Everybody would have jobs. You could raise your family better. There's more psychological peace if education was free. Not medical. Not a bus fare. Education. Why does a college student go to college and have to be put in debt for the rest of their lives fighting off this college debt just to get an education? That's against the law. That's an injustice. So I say, hip hop is everywhere. Should take the fight to the university. That's where we need to be fighting. Go there and demand that education be free. Let's storm the universities. Don't storm the government. The government's weak right now. Everybody know that. Corporations run the government now. They, 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 you're not going to get answers from the government. They are the managers of Burger King. They are not in power. 
They're not the franchise owner of the state. The government doesn't control the state anymore. Corporations do. So you don't want to fight the corporations because you're an instant hypocrite. You buy from the corporation you go fight from. You go eat the food. The you go fight the same corporation. You eat the same food. That war can't be won, at least not on that front. Here's what we can win. Take that protest into the universities, global. All universities should teach hip hop. They should teach hip hop from a certified hip hop cultural specialist. This alone would create a million new jobs around the world. If, if universities would just comply, with hip hop's cultural principles, two million jobs open up for everybody around the world, open up for everybody. Everybody wins on this one. But universities are colonizing hip hop. They're taking hip hop, just like, uh, like diamonds, like oil, like peanuts, like seed, like anything. They're trying to commodify it and take it from us. And hip hop should not stand for that. Take your protest to the university and demand more knowledge, not more money. Demand more knowledge, not more freedom even. Because we were slaves and got free through knowledge. Now today they say we, we free and we're more slaves because of lack of knowledge. It's knowledge that reigns supreme. Yes. Hmm, what a coincidence. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.